Hey everybody, welcome back to my garden. So it is a really crisp and windy fall day, but I have a super exciting video for you. I am planting all of my fall flower bulbs. Now, if you know me, you know that I absolutely love fall flower bulbs. I think it's really special how you plant them now and your garden doesn't look any different, but then uh, in the spring, they come up and just give you a huge show of color. And so they, like I said, these are one of my favorite things in the garden. So I have a little bit over 400 bulbs here. When I was gardening, primarily in San Diego, I was planting upwards of a thousand a year. But now here in a colder winter area where these are perennials and I don't have to replace them every year like I do in San Diego, I am planting a little bit less that I can plant them longer and put more in the garden every year. And so I won't run out of space quite as quickly. So to start on my right, I've got 200 of the Tulip Pride mixture. These are all giant Darwin hybrids. There's a mix of, I want to say five varieties that are all in the kind of pink and purple color family. The, this variety, these varieties all get about 22 inches tall. And I really love giant Darwin hybrids because they are really reliable and they get nice big flowers. I, when I'm planting tulips out in the garden, it's usually giant Darwin hybrids. And then to my left, I have a variety of Triumph tulips, which are probably my second favorite after the giant Darwin hybrids. And this is a variety called Paul Scherer. These ones are so deep purple that they look black out in the garden. I first saw this variety when I was on a trip to Helsinki, Finland a few years ago, and these were in bloom all over the city and they looked absolutely spectacular. So ever since then, these have been on my list to add to my garden. And this is finally the year that I'm planting some. And then finally, for tulips, I have the variety Hakoon. This is another giant Darwin hybrid, but a white one. And then down in the front, I have 50 of uh, Narcissus Zit. These are a miniature daffodil that get four to six inches tall and are an all white variety. And then finally, I have some Fritillaria. These are the variety Maxima Lutea. These guys get about three feet tall and are really crisp yellow. I like to mix in some other of the less common varieties of bulbs, like the fritillarias and stuff like that, into the garden to give it a little bit more of a unique look. So for the tulips and the daffodils are all hardy down to zone three. I'm in zone five here in Spokane, Washington, so they should all come back and be perennial and do really well here. The fritillarias are hardy down to zone five, so these should also come back, but I'm anticipating that they'll be a little bit less reliable than the tulips and the daffodils. If these guys, if we get a really bad winter one year, the fertile area might not make it. Um, but we are technically zone six here, so they should be winter hardy. Um, but like I said, I wouldn't, these are a little bit more sensitive, so I wouldn't be all that surprised if they didn't make it. But, uh, so planting tulips and all the flower bulbs for that matter is relatively easy. All I'm gonna do is, is dig some holes, throw some fertilizer in there, and then they should be good to go for the spring. So let's go out and I will show you how I'm gonna do it. Okay, so I'm here in my front flower bed. This is where the cherry that I planted a few videos ago is just to my right. And then one of the Japanese maples I planted in another video is just behind me. Um, so to plant the tulip bulbs, um, I'm going to use an auger. Um, I will link some options for augers down below. This makes the job much, much faster. So I just have the auger on a cordless trail. And so all I'm gonna do is take a tulip bulb, scrape my mulch away, And then, with <laughs> important to hold it with both hands, drill down about four to six inches, probably closer to six inches. So you can see that that makes the job super fast and easy. This is pretty light soil up here, so it's easy to begin with. And then I'm gonna take some Biotrump starter fertilizer. And this hole's a little deep, so I'm gonna put some soil back in it. Um, so I'm going to mix a little handful of biotone in, and then I'm going to take my flower bulb and just nestle it down in there and cover it back up. So the auger, I'll link some options for augers down below. That makes this job a hundred times easier and faster. The only way that I could plant these hundreds of bulbs in a couple hours is using an auger. So what I'm going to do is just lay all of my bulbs out, and then I'm going to go through again and aug holes and you know, get them all planted. So that's really all there is to it. Um, it's still a pretty time consuming job, but with the right equipment, you can do it pretty quickly.
Okay, so all of the tulips that I'm planting in the front of the house are planted. I put the 200 of the Pride mix underneath the Quans and Cherry that I just planted a couple videos ago. And then I planted the 100 of the Paul Cher in this bed just behind me that has the privet that I transplanted, a globosa blue spruce, and then a couple other random things. I am planning to really fill this bed up. And so when I'm planting all of the other things, the tulips probably will get a little bit wrecked, but that's okay. I'll lose some of them. It's not the end of the world. There are enough of them in here that it should be more than enough to keep it looking full, even after I plant a whole bunch of other things. And a couple things that I forgot to mention in the beginning of the video, one is that I got all of these bulbs from Van England. I will link them down below. They, I have purchased bulbs from, there, from them for about a decade now, and I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but they have really high quality bulbs, and I have never been disappointed. And then you also want to plant them with the pointed side facing up. Um, this is something that confuses a lot of people of whether the point goes down or up. Um, just make sure that you put the point facing up. And then this green, the paper skin that's surrounding the bulb, you want to leave that on there. A lot of people want to take that off, um, but that actually helps A, protect the bulb, and then B, feed the bulb as the paper skin starts to break down. There's a lot of nutrients in that that you want to keep. Sometimes they just kind of naturally fall off and you'll just have the white bulb, but if that doesn't happen, you don't want to take it off. Um, so I'm going to go in the backyard and get the rest of them planted. Okay, so I got the rest of the tulips planted, the last 100 of them, which is the variety cocoon, the white one, planted in this bed that is next to the patio. I've got uh, some daffodils planted on the other side. They're a white variety that are all clustered right along the patio. So I kept these ones to the other side of the bed so that they wouldn't be intermingled and so that I wouldn't hit any of the daffodils as I was planting the tulips. I didn't water any of the bulbs in today. And that is because we have a lot of precipitation in the forecast. We're supposed to get a good amount of rain over the next two days or so. Um, so I'm not going to worry about watering anything in. At this point in the year, it's, you know, really not necessary. If I was planting them a few weeks ago when it was, when it was still rather dry, I would have plant, watered everything in. Um, but right now, I'm not going to worry about it. And the other, my 50 daffodils and my three for the area are going to have to wait till tomorrow to get planted because it is getting very windy out here. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe down below so that you can see updates in the spring and see how all of these flowers look in bloom. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.